Pastor Ed here with Daily Devotions for Thursday, June the 15th, 2023, continuing our look at Abraham. We're going to be looking at him for a couple of months, actually, all together. Uh, but we were our reading from this past Sunday was Genesis 11, uh, verse 31 to chapter 12, verse 9. Um, just wanted to read for you and, and share some thoughts about um, verses 4 and 5, which go read as follows. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Abram took his wife Sarai and his brother's son Lot, and all his possessions that they had gathered, and the persons whom they had acquired in Haran, and they set forth to go to the land of Canaan. We've talked about and we'll be talking about really the, the whole story of, of Abram slash Abraham is a story of, of faith and faithfulness, uh, of being called to respond to God um, in faithfulness, um, and to, to think about what that means. A fellow by the name of uh, Bob Diefenbaugh wrote a piece that I uh, came across online, uh, and, and in part he, he did a nice concluding section where he kind of compared, you know, the Christian walk, the Christian life, the Christian faith, you know, to the example in the faith, and of course I've entitled this whole sermon series Father in the Faith, because that's what Abraham was. Um, and, and he makes some interesting points, the first of which is that Abraham's faith, or Abram's faith, began at the initiative of God. Um, it, it's God who says, go from here, leave your, 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 you know, your homeland, your, you know, your, where you, what you've always known, your father's house, your family, every, you know, go to this place that you do not know. God is the one who initiates it. It's not, uh, as much as we remember Abraham as having this great faith, and we're going to see he was a very fallible, um, normal human being, um, as much as we admire his faith, it, it wasn't his faith that kicked this things off. It, God, as God is wont to do, as God does in our own lives, God initiates things. I mean, we've had some baptisms, and we talk about baptism, especially from a Lutheran perspective, of it's not, it's not the individual's faith that culminates in baptism. It's God reaching out, and especially and clearly in an infant, uh, there's, there's, no, there's no faith of the individual child at that point. Um, you know, it's, it's God, God's initiative. Second point he makes is that Abram's spiritual life um, uh, continued through God's work. Um, you know, again, it's not just about Abraham. It's not, or Abram again at this point. It's, it's God leading him, guiding him. Um, and we're really dependent, as Abram was, on, on God leading us and guiding us. And so the third point he makes is that a Christian's, the Christian's walk is also a pilgrimage. You know, Abraham lived as a pilgrim, um, moving um, Hebrews, the passage, and we'll look at that on Saturday. You know, by faith he lived as an alien in the land of promises, in a foreign land, dwelling in tents, um, looking for the foundation, which has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. You know, the, the Christian walk of faith, like Abram's, uh, is is a pilgrimage. It's a journey. It um, it isn't accomplished all at once either. Uh, the fourth point he makes is that the Christian walk is rooted in the reliability of the Word of God, and he says when you stop to think about it, Abram had no concrete, tangible proof that a life of blessing lay ahead. Remember, God promised. Um, a land, a nation, and, and, and a blessing. Um, but there was no proof of this, no concrete, tangible proof. Uh, all Abram had to rely on was God, the God who had revealed himself to him. And in the final analysis, as Diefenbach writes, that's, that's all that anyone can have. Um, the bottom line is that we simply must believe and trust what God has said to us uh, in, his, in his word. Uh, and that should be enough. The fifth point he makes is that the Christian walk is simply doing what God has told us to do and believing us as we do so. Again, building on this idea uh, of trust, relying on God, trusting in God, um, that what God has said um, is 
is something that we can depend on. Um, that God's word is reliable, again, going back to that last point. And then his final point is that the Christian walk, like it was for Abram, is a process in the growth of, of grace, not just faith, but grace as well, of, of coming to understand what it is that we are so undeserving of that God ne nevertheless, is what I'm trying to say, nevertheless graciously bestows uh, upon us. Um, and it's this, this pilgrimage, this, this journey, uh, it doesn't happen all at once. You know, years go by, decades even, before God's promises are fulfilled um, in his life. Uh, he, he writes, uh, you know, how long have you been a Christian? Um, do you realize that it was probably years from the time that Abram was called in Ur until he ended up in Canaan? Did you know that Abram, that after Abram entered the land of Canaan, it was another 25 years until he had his son? You know, so there was the land. It's another 25 years before the son is born from whom the great nation would come. Um, and he asked the question, can you fathom the fact that after leaving Haran for Canaan, that God worked in Abram's life for a very, very long time, um, and it grows through time and through testing, and that was true in Abram's life, and that's going to be true in our lives as well. It's a lifelong walk, a lifelong journey of faith. Well, we'll be back uh, again tomorrow on Friday to talk a little bit more about the end of that passage and then uh, look at that uh, Hebrews 11, uh, those verses on Saturday. So until then, take care. Have you hope, hope you have a great day today. Bye-bye.